quick revision video on Hess's law cycles involving enthalpy changes of formation. So let's suppose we want to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction A to B. I'm going to use enthalpy changes of formation to do that, so we construct what I call a formation cycle. So if you think about the definition for enthalpy change of formation, it's the enthalpy change for the formation of one mole of a compound from its constituent elements. So that's why I've got an element box in the bottom of the cycle there. So essentially, this arrow here represents the enthalpy changes of formation of the reactants in our equation, our AB equation. And this one here is the enthalpy changes of formation for the product in that AB equation. And if you've got more than one reactant or more than one product here, you're going to need to add them together. So we've got the sum of in both of those. So we'll bring Hess's law in now. So Hess's law states that if a reaction can take place by two routes, the enthalpy change for each route is the same, provided that the starting and finishing conditions are the same. So the two routes, we can start from A and go to B, we can go directly across the top, so that's that unknown enthalpy change, or we could go through this way here, so we'll call it the blue route. So you can see from the arrow directions, this arrow here is going in the right direction, or the correct direction for the, the blue arrow, but this arrow here is going in the wrong direction. So we essentially just need to flip that round and we do that by subtracting it. So the formula we're going to use looks like this. That unknown enthalpy change is equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes of formation of the products in our equation. Our arrow is going in the correct direction, but we're going to subtract from that the sum of the enthalpy changes of the reactants. That's because that arrow is going in the wrong direction. So we'll put that into practice now for this question here. Use the data in the table to calculate the enthalpy change of the reaction ZnCO3 solid going to ZnO solid plus CO2 gas. And you can see clearly in the table these are enthalpy changes of formation. So that's a sign that you're going to use the uh, formation cycle method. So if you want to pause the video, have a go and then play on for the answer. So there's the cycle, so that's our AB reaction if you like, ZnCO3 going to ZnO and CO2, that's the unknown enthalpy change. Elements at the bottom, so this arrow here represents the enthalpy change of formation of the reactants, just got one in this case, one reactant, and here it represents the enthalpy change of formation of the products. So we'll just go through the calculation now, so delta H question mark is that minus that, products minus reactants, Remember that arrow is going in the wrong direction, that's why I had to subtract it. So we'll put the numbers in now, just be careful with signs, and we end up with a delta H of plus 71 kilojoules per mole. I just want to make one final point now. If this equation had been balanced with numbers other than 1, so let's say there was a 2 there, you would have to double the value for the ZNO, for example, because this value here is for one mole kilojoules per mole. If the cycle's got two moles in it, obviously you've got to double it. Three, you'd have to treble and so on.